Hey, this is Dr. Barry. In this short video, let's discuss uh, Jillian Michael's recent opinion video about the ketogenic diet. Is Jillian Michael's right about keto? Jillian Michaels is a huge celebrity in the fitness sphere, and so I think we should take what she says seriously. I think she has years of experience training people in the gym, and she has been around nutrition a lot, and I think that we shouldn't just dismiss this because it's anti-keto. I think we should discuss her opinions and some specific, specific quotes in the video and uh, take her seriously and, and give her a rational review of what she said in this recent video. Uh, you can find this video on YouTube. It's on a, a huge YouTube channel. I'm not sure if they paid her or not to do this video, but uh, she obviously is very opinionated about the ketogenic way of eating. So let's talk about this. So if, if you know somebody who might be interested in my opinion about her opinion, please share this on your social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, email, text, I don't care. Help me to help more people to fix their diet and reverse their chronic disease by sharing this video. Now, first of all, let me just talk about my credentials and why my opinion might or might not matter. I'm a board certified family physician. I've been practicing medicine for 18 years. I've seen tens of thousands of patients, both in the emergency room, in the labor and delivery ward, in uh, my clinic and in other clinics. And so I've been doing this for a minute and I've been keeping a close eye on nutrition and nutrition research during that time. Now, it's absolutely true that the average doctor doesn't get much nutrition training at all in medical school. But if a doctor truly takes his oath seriously and truly understands the, the meaning of the word practice, then he keeps learning. He keeps looking at new things. He keeps trying to refine his opinion on nutrition and other things. And that's what I've done over the years. I used, I've recommended many diets over my practice. I used to actually recommend the biggest loser diet, which is what Jillian is perhaps most famous for. Uh, I, I've recommended the Weight Watchers diet, Jenny Craig, flexitarian, ADA, AHA, back when I was a stupid doctor and didn't know better, I recommended those types of diets because I believed in calorie restriction as the solution for obesity, weight loss, and the reversal of diabetes and other chronic diseases. I now know better than that, and that's why I advocate the ketogenic way of eating. And when you go and actually look at these diets, um, Oprah Winfrey bought stock in Weight Watchers for a, a specific reason, if the Weight Watchers diet actually worked and it's just another form of calorie restriction, then people, once they lost weight with Weight Watchers, they'd keep it off forever, right? And so the Weight Watchers would be a terrible business investment. But the reason Oprah bought stock in it is because it's an excellent business investment because it, it never works long term. Everybody regains the weight. And you may have actually done that with Weight Watchers. Uh, there's an article I posted a link down below about the biggest loser television show that was in the US, it was in Australia, maybe other places. But the reason they never have a reunion show for all the biggest loser contestants is because that 95% of them have regained their weight. Yeah. And so it'd be kind of embarrassing to have a, a reunion show for the biggest loser show because it would they would all be obese again. And I, I posted a link to an article down below about that. And so that's why I stopped recommending Weight Watchers and the Biggest Loser Diet and other diets like that that are just calorie restriction is because they virtually never work long term. And so uh, the reason I came to the ketogenic way is because I was looking for a diet that's easy, sustainable, full of whole, real foods that also gives you permanent results. And that's what I think keto does. Now, let's talk about some of the quotes in this video. So... One of the things she says right up front is that, you know, people talk about studies and they'll pick one study and say, oh, this proves everything. And then the, she says, quote, they'll use this to sell a bill of goods. And so if you know me, you know, I don't sell pills, powders, potions, weight loss books. I don't have a weight loss app. 
I don't do any of that. I'm just trying to help people reverse their obesity and chronic disease. But I find it very telling that that that's that was her main first point is that people are trying to sell you a bill of goods. And we'll get back to that later in the video when I tell you some of the things that Jillian is currently trying to sell. And so I, I agree with her. I think people misquote nutrition facts and research all the time to try to sell a bill of goods. So I agree with her on that. Uh, she admits, secondly, at the very beginning of the video, that keto does help with weight loss, that it does help reverse type 2 diabetes, that it does help with polycystic ovarian syndrome, and that it does help with fertility issues. She's, she admits that, and I agree with her. I think keto helps with all that and then some. She says that she's also done this with her diets, and I, I believe that's probably true, because if I took you, if you were an overweight weight woman with PCOS who couldn't get pregnant, and I locked you in my barn and fed you lettuce for six months, you would lose weight. I promise you would. And you might, in the process of that, reverse your type 2 diabetes. You might reverse your PCOS. And if your boyfriend were with you in the barn, you might get pregnant. But as soon as I let you out of my barn, you would head to the nearest Chinese buffet and you would gain back all your weight because calorie restriction is torture. Calorie restriction is suffering, it is hunger, and it is never a long-term solution. So yes, she's probably done those things with her diet, but then she stops looking when they gain all the weight back because no one can starve themselves forever. It is not sustainable. It is not in human nature to do that. We are hardwired to eat. And if we get hungry enough, we'll eat our neighbor, right? And so some people on Weight Watchers or the Biggest Loser Diet, you may remember that hunger, that ravenous, gnawing hunger. Like I will literally eat the nogger hide off this couch if I don't get something to eat. That's not sustainable. That, that's not ancestrally appropriate. It makes no sense from a physiological standpoint to say, hey, here's this new diet. Just start starving yourself and do that forever because that is what calorie restriction is. And so she admits that keto helps with all these things. Then she says, but the ketosis is a state of emergency in the human body. Now, I'm not sure where she gets this from. This is a very ill-informed opinion Ketosis is a very natural state of being for the human system. Uh, 10,000 years ago, virtually every human was in ketosis most of the day, most of the year. That's how we lived up in the northern latitudes when there was nothing to eat but fatty meat and maybe a little bit of veg. We didn't have the huge franken fruits that we have today to knock us out of ketosis back then. We had to eat lots of animals and animal products, and we ate a little bit of veg if we had to or if we could find it. And so to say that ketosis is a state of emergency is just an ignorant opinion. And I'm not being uh, disrespectful to Miss Michaels. I have nothing but the utmost of respect for her. But the problem is, is that when you, when you wake up in the morning from fasting while you were asleep, you're often in ketosis. Newborn babies are in ketosis. Breastfed babies are in ketosis. Uh, if, you, if you just eat the, the natural, appropriate, proper human diet, you're in ketosis much of the time. And so to say that it's a state of emergency is just an ignorant opinion. She obviously hasn't read much into the, the physiology of nutrition or ketosis, or she wouldn't have said something silly like that. She then goes on to say that there's zero calorie restriction on keto. And I agree. We don't think about calories. And, and so let me say I, I sort of agree with that. Because when you're eating the ketogenic way, you're going to naturally restrict your energy intake, right? Because the fat keeps you full, the protein keeps you full. And so you are going to ultimately restrict calories, but you're not going to waste your time counting calories. And that's what Jillian and, and Weight Watchers and everyone else wants you to do is count calories and restrict them. That is, but we've been trying to do that for a hundred years. Did you know that calorie restriction as a hypothesis for weight loss has been around for 100 years, and yet we have this obesity epidemic and type 2 diabetes epidemic and this fatty liver epidemic? It don't work. You, that is the wrong paradigm. That's the wrong mindset. You have to think about eating the correct foods. Then your body will take care of all the rest. You don't have to count calories, okay? So then she goes on to say, that there's massive oxidative stress when you're eating keto. And I'm not sure where she gets this from either. I've actually, I posted a link down below of all the low carb and keto research that shows benefits to your health. 
So, yeah, I don't know what she really, I think she just dropped oxidative stress is kind of a buzzword, kind of a scary key word that will freak people out. But when you actually look at the research, there's no evidence that the ketogenic way of eating or low carb is bad for you in any way. She says there's no consideration of meal timing on keto, which I I found hilarious because back when I was recommending the Biggest Loser Diet and Weight Watchers and all these, none of those guys talk about time-restricted eating. None of them talk about intermittent fasting the way we talk about that in the ketogenic way. I'd actually never heard of time-restricted feeding or eating or, or intermittent fasting before I started keto, and I bet you hadn't either. And so to say that there's no consideration of meal timing on keto is, again, a very ignorant statement. The ketogenic diet, low-carb, banting, they all naturally make you go to a time-restricted feeding window because you're just not hungry because you've eaten all that good fat and protein, you're not hungry. And so often you'll forget lunch. You'll just forget to eat because that's the natural state of the human body is not to be hungry all the damn time. Now, if you're eating a Weight Watchers diet or the Biggest Loser diet and eating lots of carbs, you're hungry all the time. You're having to eat every two or three hours. And so I would say the exact opposite of what she said here is true. The the ketogenic way of eating brings to the forefront time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting and and meal timing more than any other diet has ever done. So I disagree on that. She says that, quote, autophagy is totally out of whack on keto. Now, <laughs> if if she means by totally out of whack that autophagy is ramped up greatly with keto, then I agree with her. She's right. The ketogenic way of eating is a fasting mimicking diet. Fasting is fasting, and both of those ramp up your rate of autophagy, which is a very, very good and healthy thing. If you're looking to increase your lifespan or your health span or both, then keto plus intermittent fasting is the way. And so again, I'm afraid she just didn't really do her research before she made this video because there are multiple studies, I've got linked down below, that show that that a low carb diet is fasting mimicking, that fasting ramps up your autophagy. That's the reason we do it, or one of the main reasons we do it. So I'm I'm afraid, again, she just didn't know what she was talking about here. She says the ketogenic diet is very high in animal protein, and she's absolutely right. And I, I put a smiley face in my notes here because that's actually, I think, a very good thing for the vast majority of human existence on this planet. We've eaten as much animal fat and animal protein as we could get our hands on, I would argue that that's why we became homo sapien sapien. We are, we are primates who are aware of our existence because of this huge brain that we have that was fed with all the animal protein that we've tried our best to get our hands on for all the thousands of years that we've been in our current state. If you eat a lot of animal fat, you're going to also get a lot of animal protein. And I think when you actually look into the research that talks about animal protein being bad for you, you can quickly see the researcher's bias and you can see the the inconsistencies and just the flat out errors of this research. And so, yeah, the keto diet is very often high in animal protein. The ketogenic diet is not a high protein diet for most people. It's a moderate protein diet. Now, there are some people who advocate high protein, and I don't disagree with them. I think that probably works great for some people. But for most people, a high fat, moderate protein ketogenic diet is the way they feel the best and get the best results. She says that your telomeres are negatively affected with ketogenic diet. Now, once again, let's remember the link down below to all the research. The ketogenic way of eating is a fasting mimicking diet. It is a, and fasting is fasting. Both of those things actually will protect your telomere length. And the the telomere length is a huge area of research. It's very hot right now. I've been looking at it for for at least five years. It's a huge deal, I think. And she's just wrong about this. I think your telomere length is negatively affected by the chronic inflammation and the high oxidative stress caused by eating lots of carbohydrates. Then finally, she says, the ketogenic diet causes lots of inflammation. Now, if any of you guys out there have eaten the ketogenic way, you know that no other diet has ever relieved your inflammation in your joints, in your gut, in your esophagus, in your brain, better than keto. So again, I'm afraid this is just an ignorant 
opinion that, and she just didn't do her research before she made this video. I'm not sure if she got paid to make this video. I'm not sure if she's trying to protect her financial interest by making this video, but I'm afraid that may be the case because the, the ketogenic way of eating is more uninflammatory than any other diet I've ever recommended in the almost 20 years of my medical practice. Uh, so I'm afraid that what Miss Michaels is afraid of is that the ketogenic diet is really taking off. It's becoming very popular. It's almost mainstream now, and that's because it works. Okay, there aren't any huge celebrities making millions of dollars recommending keto. We just recommend it because hell, it worked. It worked for me. It worked for my mama. It worked for my cousin. It worked for my dog. When I put my dog on an ancestrally appropriate diet, my dog lost weight and reversed his type two diabetes. That's important. That's a big deal. And that's why people are recommending the ketogenic way of eating. The ketogenic movement is a grassroots movement. No one at the top is saying, hey, eat keto. It's all of your friends and neighbors saying, oh my God, keto changed my life. And it's permanent. Maybe you should try it. And so you may or may not know that Jillian has a fat burner capsule that you can buy at Walmart. And, and, and if you know anything about weight loss and human nutrition, you'll know that Fat burners were a fad back in the 80s and 90s. They might cause a little bit of uh, weight loss up front, but they're not sustainable. They're not, not long term. They're also very bad for your heart. Uh, and uh, many of them have been taken off the market because they've done damage to the human heart. She has also her fat burner is for sale on Amazon. You can Google those and quickly find that to be true. I recommend you don't take a fat burner at all. I think that's a very bad, unhealthy way to lose weight. It's not sustainable. It's not long term. It's an artificial fad way to lose weight. And I, I, I suspect that keto is cutting into her fat burner profits. And maybe that's why she made this video. She also has a, a diet app that you can get on your phone and it's $15 a month. It's a great idea for a business model. I should look into that. But I'm afraid that people are canceling their subscription to her app because keto is getting them what they want and they're not having to pay $15 a month to get it. Also, every book that Jillian has ever written is a calorie restriction book. You need to cut back on your calorie intake and you need to work out like a dog every day. That's how you lose weight. Now, for somebody like Jillian, who's always been metabolically blessed with lots of muscle and low body fat, it's easy to preach that kind of stuff. But for people who have been morbidly obese and have tried Weight Watchers and Biggest Loser and joined the gym 15 times, you know, for the last 15 January 1s, you've done that and failed every time, it's not your fault. It's because that way of dieting, that calorie restriction model does not work long term. You might lose 10, 20, 30, but you're going to gain it all back plus five. So stop worrying about calories and start worrying about eating a proper human diet, hacking your hormones, mimicking fasting and fasting. That's how you're going to get the long term sustainable benefits that you want. Now, I've got links down below. You can check out all this stuff. And then another weird link where Jillian says she hates police officers. I don't even know what that's about, but I put a link down there so you can check it out. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'm sorry, it's a little bit on the long side, but there was a lot of quotes I had to address. Please click the subscribe button and the little bell right beside it so that every time I have a bright idea or an opinion, you'll be one of the very first to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.